hey guys welcome to or welcome back to my channel it's another reading vlog as you probably have seen in the thumbnail or the title i will be reading all six volumes of lock and key this is written by joe hill and illustrated by gabriel rodriguez i'm so excited to have these i purchased all six and came this little like crate thingy but I am so excited to have these originally I was going to be reading these digitally I caved I caved I had to have them in my hands to read them I'm so excited you don't understand so lock and key this is the graphic novel series all all six of them maybe this is the graphic novel series. It is horror, fantasy, spooktacular graphic novels following this family who moves in to the lock manor, if you will, after a whole bunch of tragic past of their, I believe, if this is similar to the Netflix show, their father passes away and the family moves in to the lock manor where there's some little spooky things going on these little keys that you can find that have different abilities like uh, allowing you to go into your brain like like you anyway um i'm very excited to read these as i just mentioned earlier there is a netflix show there's three seasons i believe it's done there might be another season i don't remember to be honest but there's three seasons they're spooky they're scary, but they're not, like, too scary. They're not, like, um, The Haunting of Hill House, The Haunting of Bly Manor, like, not that scary, but still eerie and creepy, but also, like, fun and sci-fi, fantasy, horror. I really love the show. I loved the show. I don't watch a lot of TV, but when I do, it's, like, a Netflix show of some sort, and I binged the first season, and then I was sad when it ended and I had to wait a year for the second and same thing with the third and so now I'm gonna read them for the first time ever and I'm very excited I think that the art style is so interesting like it's not at all what I was expecting I'm just very intrigued I'm very excited I'm gonna shut up now and I'm going to go start reading these wonderful amazing books that I'm so excited for okay Let's do. It went down. So, it's exactly what I was expecting it to be based off of the Netflix show but like in one small book I like the way that the show does it is it's like probably gonna be the first two or first three in the first season whereas in the first graphic novel it very quickly goes through the plot points so basically in this one we have our main characters who are following the tragic incident of losing their father, which is quite graphic, I'm not gonna lie. Um, kinda hard to read, kinda sad, kinda hurts. And then they move to the lock house. I'm pretty sure it's the lock house. Key house, there we go. They move to the key house and basically they're just living there not best lives, but they're, they're living, you know, and their tragic past is following them and causing a lot of trouble, while also at the same time you've got our main character, one, one of the siblings, which we basically kind of bounce between the three perspectives, but Bodhi is one of, is the youngest brother and he goes into the well house and speaks with his echo and imagery kind of creepy but also kind of beautiful um you can see echo there she's kind of batty but also like actually bad so like not great um and so yeah we're following 
that as Bodhi is trying to help Echo with her freedom while Echo is using Sam and horrible things to get her way and she's basically the main baddie but um yeah it's exactly what I thought it would be it wasn't anything surprising it took me longer to read than I was expecting but I did also like pick up Instagram a couple times in between so but now I'm going to jump right in to the second book which is going to be Head Games this one's Welcome to Lovecraft because they moved to Lovecraft Massachusetts or something and then this one is going to be Head Games, which because they found the head key, which allows you to like go into your brain and memory and subconscious and so on and so forth. So we're going to just jump right into this. So I am now like ha um, over halfway through the second lock and key. I just wanted to throw out there, warn the people. Obviously there's already trigger warnings going into this, like it is an adult graphic novel. There's blatant murder in the first book, but there's also blatant homophobic remarks made by two irrelevant characters in a bar that are kind of hard to read a little extreme a little not necessary to this extent the language is getting a bit more uh explicit but overall i'm enjoying this one more than the first just because we're getting more into the magic with the keys specifically this uh head key i really like that like that was my favorite part about the show was the fact that, like these keys have these like really cool abilities so it's fun exploring them in the story but also the storyline is getting it's it's the calm before the storm like the first one there was like two extremely traumatic events where this is kind of the aftermath of it and it's not as heavy but again trigger warnings for the different topics that come throughout so i just finished book two of lock and key I loved it way more. Granted, they use the R word a bit much for um, Ellie's son, which I don't love. Um, the two super homophobic ladies really didn't need to be in the story. It wasn't necessary. It did nothing for the plot. It was just kind of there. It didn't need to be there. Yeah, but like the actual storyline, I enjoyed more. The magic of the keys, I enjoyed more. So giving this one four stars I'm gonna make this one three stars because I prefer this one so now we're gonna move on to the third one crown of shadows another one done four stars um way more keys way more humor funny enough um there's just like a lot of funny things but like a lot happened in this book that helped with the plot and like further developed whereas the last one nothing really happened that was substantial but in this one like things happened but it was good for the plot you know so i'm enjoying it i'm excited for the final three I'm super tired though, so I have to get these done. Trigger warning for graphic animal death? Fighting? I don't really know. Also, we get random like artistic changes um, part way through the story for like Bodhi's perspectives. But also, there's moments where he talks like a complete adult, which doesn't make any sense. Like, he talks like his teen siblings, but he's seven years old. And something about, like, a kid turning into a bird and then saying that there's another bird's ass feathers in their mouth or whatever, like, doesn't sound like what a seven-year-old would say. I'm unsure. 
then a few pages later, there are two black characters in this whole book, and one of them just had to say the N-word. Um, which, like, the authors could have very easily starred that out or done something else. Because, like, I get in the context of, like, talking about graffiti in a racist town why they're saying the word and like it's the one black character so it's okay but like this was not written by black people so like maybe don't use the hard r or just like star it out like i i get it people can write what they want and like whatever but like how many times we can talk about that? the word just like shouldn't be used um by a lot of people and not all literature needs to use that kind of language. It just, I don't like it. I'm really not sure how I feel about our two white characters turning black to have social commentary on what it's like to be black and be ignored by society, but also to disguise them from a crime that they committed so that the media focuses on the wrong people. Also, the plot kind of feels like we missed something in between, like three and four. Like, things have changed that were not stated previously, like small things like relationship stuff, but I'm just like, what is going on but now that we're like getting back into the story it's normal again but i was like what what was that whole segment about race and i don't i don't know What a journey this has been. Let me get more in frame for you. So, I just finished the fifth and the sixth novel. Um, the fifth one was good. It definitely was setting up a lot of plot. It was really preparing you for so much that was gonna happen. Um, it's a lot of backstory, like, this is kind of the prequel, if you will. It has history of how the key in the manor became, and then also with the dad who the kids have lost, his story with the keys and their, his friend group. It was fun. It wasn't my favorite. I still gave it four stars, but it wasn't as enjoyable as the other ones just because like, I didn't care about the cast as much, but I still liked the story and where it was going. And then this. I almost cried twice. Twice this stupid little book almost made me cry. Like 191 pages and I thought I might cry. This is the finale. And it feels like a finale from the beginning. Like you know this is going to end. You know where it's going. Granted you don't know where it's going. But you, you have an idea. <laughs> but wow wow wow. Um, Again. 
unnecessary language but I did enjoy it I really did it made me emotional I'm a little still upset with the ending just a little bit but like overall happy with it but that concludes that's that's it guys we did it um I want these to be in the proper order that was all six lock and key graphic novels I did it we did it um what a journey to be entirely honest one these took a lot longer to read than I thought they would also um would I recommend these that that's the question I would say watch the show if you love the show maybe pick them up if unnecessary language is something that might trigger you or upset you don't read them because the r word is used religiously throughout because of rufus's character who honestly deserves the entire world he's probably the best character but he has autism he's on the spectrum and they call him the r word so frequently and i understand like having bad characters be bad especially because these were written from 2008 to 2014 i believe not that that excuses because by then people should know like hey don't suck um but maybe in the time like that that word back then definitely was it wasn't as politically incorrect as it is now i would say but it's just like ooh. I don't want to read that I don't like it but at the same time I get it there was a it was a different time whatever my biggest complaint was in the fourth book hello guy <laughs> my biggest complaint was in the fourth uh novel why did these characters need to put on blackface for such a short scene I understand the author's intent with trying to talk about this very old town in Massachusetts that's very homophobic very classist very racist but it's all like an undertone of it it's not well some of it was blatant but a lot of it's very like not said but expressed and I understand what the author might have been trying to go for and say with the characters changing race so that they can sneak into a mental facility was very poorly executed it was not a very long part of the beginning of this book it didn't go very far the commentary did not hit the mark that it needed to it was just kind of brushed over and then never addressed again and i will give the book credit there are multiple people of color multiple black people I don't think there's any other ethnicity besides white and black but there are multiple black people most of them die eh, two of them had a happy ending so like eh, give and take I suppose but I will give them like they have gay characters they have black characters like there is diversity they have an autistic representation but at the same time there are so many slurs in here that it's hard to see the rep representation as valid because you're also just degrading them at the same time I don't know it was weird a weird moment I'm still not a thousand percent sure how I feel about the book part of me loves them like these made me really happy they made me emotional I really enjoyed them but at the same time there are things that are harder to excuse so I can't say these are going to be like a five star favorite series of all time because I can't completely look past those things but I can look past them to an extent to know that this is the source material of a show that I really love and I recommend the show full-heartedly forever and ever the show is so fantastic I definitely think you should watch it if you're interested in the series if you love the show pick them up if you want to but just be cautious of what you're going into I'm still on the fence on how I feel, but I am glad that I own them. I'm glad that I read them. I had a good time reading them for this vlog, but that means that this is the end. It is 7.46 on October 4th, and I need to now edit this video and get it uploaded. So if you're seeing this, hey, thanks for watching. Um, 
but yeah that's that's how the this is going it definitely took me longer to read these than I thought it would for them being like 140 to 190 pages each really thought that I have knocked these out in like an hour but the font was smaller took me a little bit harder to read it's all good though but <laughs> that's it I'm gonna leave you guys here I will see you tomorrow in my next video feel free to give this a like subscribe if you want to see more I am doing booktober so that means I am posting every day for the month of October I promise they will not all be like late uploads like this but you know when a girl's got a full-time job, sometimes it's hard to finish books, you know? But that's it. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye! <laughs>